Hello guys, uh, welcome to my channel, my name is Hugo, I'm Los Angeles based DP and today I want to show how I do a quick color grade using film emulations. I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to be using a plugin called Dehancer. And even though I'm going to be pointing to some downsides of this plugin, I want to say up front it's a great plugin and it's capable of doing things that other plugins cannot do. It just uh, has some room for improvement. And and that's why I'm going to point uh, to those downsides. But all those downsides are an, an easy fix. So let's dive in. So I'm using DaVinci Resolve and uh, here you can see on the timeline I have a few clips. Uh, those are clips from a uh, red camera, Canon R5, Canon C300, uh, Arri Alexa. So let's dive in. So uh, here's the footage I showed on Red Komodo. Um, and we in the list of uh, plugins, we can find the Hanser. Um, I'm going to choose the camera I want to use, and I'm going to choose uh, red and OK. So here's the thing, like in the list, one downside of this plugin, it doesn't have enough uh, cameras in the list. Um, it has only Helium and Monster. And it's not a big deal because you still can use uh, Helium or Monster as a even though you're using Komodo or Gemini or any other camera from RED. But it's confusing for people who don't know and looking, trying to find the exact camera in the list. They don't have it, but not a big deal. We can just apply Helium. And it's going to give us selection of uh, color profile as IPP2 only, which is strange that they didn't give us any other options. But at the same time, we don't really need any other options because I think if you're shooting on RED, you have to shoot an IPP2 only because this is the only color profile that uses and takes advantage of the whole dynamic range and the whole uh, color depth and all that so this is the best picture profile and this is the one we need to use so we're going to choose that okay right away we see the picture popped up really well uh, what can we do about this picture uh, we can do a little bit of adjustment in terms of exposure uh, going down we can see that we have also we can choose film film stocks. Uh, it has all a lot of different kind of film stocks, but the one that's chosen by default, which is Vision 3 250D, I think it works the nicest way. I think it looks the most pleasant. Um, and uh, here's also another downside of this plugin. Again, uh, it does it does have a lot of film stocks in the list, but quite honestly, only a few of them are usable and it's missing the most used film stocks in Hollywood which is uh, 5219, 5207 and the other ones, you know, 5203 and etc. And uh, the ones you have it here in the list are mostly Super 16 uh, stocks and it would be really nice to have those the industry standard, the most used uh, Hollywood film stocks like 5219 um, so that's something that uh, the developers have to look into and, and uh, make an updated version where they can add all the missing film stocks because it would be really nice to have those because I use them a lot and I have to go to different uh, lots and different plugins to use those but even though I use different plugins like Film Convert that has all those kind of stuff. I still go back to the Dehancer because Dehancer has halation. And halation is something that was really missing in any other film plugins. Because many people think that if you apply uh, a film emulation and if you apply some film grain, uh, they call it a day. But it's it's uh, it's still missing something, you know. It still look a little bit digital, and I've been doing lots of lots of research trying to find what's wrong, and what really makes it sell as a film is when you apply halation. Halation is what's really missing in the digital, and halation is basically it's not like chromatic aberration, but it's something uh, around contrast edges where you can see uh, the color fringe, you know, and that's what it's called it's called halation and thus this uh, halation emulation in uh, the dehancer is really working very well 
and I'm going to show you later how it works. So we applied this uh, color profile, we applied the film stock here, uh, moving on we can adjust some exposure and we, can, we also have exposure in input and we have exposure adjustment in the print. And in the print it works a little bit in a different way than it does uh, on an input. It works more like you're working with a printed emulation, print, printed film, you know. Uh, you can also do tonal contrast which also works in a different way than just a regular contrast and you have a color density which again it's not just a regular color boost it works more like you are pushing the film uh and saturation slider which is again another downside i don't know why but by default it already maxed up at 100 percent, and i cannot do any more even though i want to add some more saturation in here I cannot do it within the same plugin, which is strange. I think they have to uh, change it. The developers have to adjust, make adjustment and make uh, saturation uh, slider with more room to play with, but not a big deal. Uh, we need to make saturation, which is going to create another lot and another uh, node. And we're going to push saturation in there. And I'm going to see that my image is a little bit too green so I'm gonna have to create another node and I'm gonna push tint a little bit somewhere there and again going back to the plugin another complaint to the plugin they don't have tint slider in there which is really strange because tint is very often used when you work with uh, film emulations and I don't know why they, it's not included in here so it's something they have to include in here as well so Let's see, I think I have to push tint a little more right there. Okay, good. So I feel like we can add some tonal contrast. Okay, that's nice. Um, and I feel like we can do, we can warm it up a little bit. Somewhere there, okay. And you see again, I had to create another node instead of using a slider uh, in, in the Dehancer plugin because for some reason it doesn't have a slider for color temperature, which is odd. Um, but not a big deal. Uh, create a node. Maybe in a new version of Dehancer they will fix it and they will add those uh, missing things. Okay, so the, by default the film grain is already applied. Uh, it's very small and defined and I kind of like it. I usually keep it on uh, with those settings, but you can also change film resolution and amount and size if you'd like. It's all based on your taste. And let's apply enable halation. So when you apply halation, you see the waveform, it changes. You can see the waveform is changes because it adds a little bit of green, a green pops up and uh, around the edges, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, you can see that around the edges you get this red halation popping up. You see the difference? It's very subtle, but it makes a huge difference on the overall look. I think it's incredible. Uh, so blooming. You can also do some blooming if you'd like to. So what it does? In film, when you shoot in film, uh, highlights roll off. It's very interesting and like smooth and blooming. So basically this emulation of blooming helps you to achieve the film blooming, you know, when your highlights overexposed and you have like hot spots or anything, it basically helps it to roll it off a little nicer. So also a nice plugin. I don't know if I wanted to use here, probably not, but for some other cases we're going to see uh, later on, I can use it. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm not using much of any other settings. There is a lot of them, but I don't want to make it too complicated. Uh, we also have false color. We also have light generator. Light generator is great because you can create a look uh, for a project you're shooting. You can export a lot. You can upload this lot to your camera and you can expose and adjust all the color settings uh, in camera which is going to be way better than you're doing on post because usually when you work with the Rex 709 and then you go uh, on post and apply film emulation, usually it's underexposed. So I always prefer to use LUT and cameras so this way I can expose to the proper values and it's good to have this LUT generated here so I can export the look I want. So I think uh, 
in terms of color grading this specific footage i think that's it as you can see it's not that complicated at all uh everyone can do this and i think just to show you the comparison this is the way we uh, got the image to look with all this uh the hands and film emulation and i'll show you side to side how it looks when it's just rex 709 applied so this is rex 709 and this is the film emulation we did huge difference right i feel like it looks better and uh, this is before and this is after looks good okay moving on uh, this is another uh this was shot on canon r5 and log 3 so we're gonna apply the lot uh, we're gonna apply the dehancer plugin and we're gonna go to choose camera and we're gonna select canon and i know it's r5 and here's again we don't have enough cameras to select from and even though right now it's everyone knows that r5 is a very popular camera also it's missing c300 mark 3 c500 mark 2 those are widely uh, used cameras and they're missing here but not a big deal because i know that c200 has uh, pretty much the same color profile so we're gonna choose c200 and go in to choose color profile again we are missing log 2 how come we're missing log 2 i don't know because log 2 is the most used and the the best uh, color profile in canon cameras i don't know how it's missing but for this specific uh, uh shot i know i it was shot in log uh, three sinigama so i'm use that but again it's not such a big deal uh because even though if you cannot find uh the camera you're using you can just create a node before and you can apply a lot rec 709 prior using uh, the dehancer a lot and then when you use the hands you just choose rec 709 here and that's it again not a big deal but something that has they, they they have to fix you know okay so it's applied so i'm gonna keep the same uh film emulation uh what i'm gonna do i'm gonna play a little bit with this and i'm gonna adjust exposure a little bit okay and tonal contrast maybe i'll de decontrast a little bit i'm gonna add some color density and i'm gonna add some saturation so i'm gonna have to create a node i'm gonna add some saturation good going back to the uh, plugin uh what can i do here as well i can do cohalation okay that's nice it's popping up and we can do blooming you see all the waves all the hot spots uh where it's almost overexposed it's changing it in a very nice way so i'll probably keep it uh, and that's pretty much it um let's check it side to side to rec 709 so this is rec 709 and this is the film emulation again big difference and i feel like it looks way more interesting okay uh, moving on to the next shot okay this was shot on can uh this was shot on aria alexa and let's apply the plugin let's choose our camera ari and again it's weird it says alexa mini i mean i think it just has to be ari or alexa because even if it's a mirror or alexa mini or alexa xt plus whatever they're using the same uh, color science and color profiles so it could have been just simplified to alexa and not, not to be confusing like alexa mini anyways we're gonna choose alexa mini since it's the only choice and we're gonna choose log c because this was shot in log c okay straight away what we can see uh, we can uh, play a little bit with exposure because it's a little bit underexposed so we're gonna bring the value up good uh we're gonna keep the same stock up because i think this stock is nice but okay um just to make it different let's let's choose different film stock let's, let's see what we have okay maybe we just choose this one 
okay uh, then we're gonna bring the exposure back to what it was okay then we're gonna play with the tonal contrast a little bit to make it more conscious okay we're gonna bring exposure up a little bit and the tonal contrast okay good we're gonna add some uh, color density good we're not gonna do saturation because I think it's satura saturated enough uh, maybe we're gonna add a little bit of uh, grain okay good and we're gonna add some halation and as you can see on the waveform when you choose the halation it pops up a little bit it's very subtle I'm not sure if you can see it on a on a YouTube screen um, with all this compression but it, it actually makes a big difference I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna try to show you you see on the edges it's popping up okay let's add some blue man and you see the blue man adds very subtle blue man on her hair on her skin and all that in this case I kind of keep it because I like it um, and that's pretty much it there is not much to do it's, so let's compare side to side how it looks um, Rex on the 9 this is Rex on the 9 and this is the film emulation and you may say like oh there is not much a big difference because surprisingly probably that's why Ari cameras are so popular because straight out of the cam straight out of the camera um, the Rex on the 9 looks really cinematic really filmic you know and this is Rex on the 9 it looks already great yes film relation looks a little nicer to my eye but surprisingly how straight out of the camera it's it's really interesting already um, moving on so this was shot on Canon C300 Mark III and I know right away that that the handset plugin doesn't have this uh, color profile so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add my uh, Rex 9 LUT applied okay and then I'm gonna choose another node and I'm gonna apply the handset plugin then by default select, selected Rex 9 which I'm gonna keep uh, what do I need straight away because I'm keeping this uh, film stock uh, but I see that the, it's very green so I'm gonna add another node and I'm gonna adjust tint and I feel like somewhere there is good then I think I want to warm it up a little bit just a tiny bit okay good and I'm probably gonna add some saturation as well okay that's good okay going back to the plugin what can we do here uh, let's play with a little bit of tonal contrast okay uh, let's play with grain let's add a little bit of the size of the grain and let's add halations good you see this halation made uh, took away the greenish a little bit from it good I like it uh, let's see if blooming works no blooming is too much for this case so we're gonna keep it as this okay I like the look I don't see what else can we do with this because the idea behind this is to keep it simple to make it quick uh, grading so let's compare this to Rex 709 side to side. This is Rex 709. This is the film emulation. Good, right? Okay, and one more shot. Uh, this was shot on the red. So we're gonna apply plugin. We're gonna choose camera. Helium IPP2. Okay, good. Um, let's see what other stocks we can use. Oh, let's choose this stock. I think it's nice. 
uh, right away I want to add some saturation good and I think somewhere there it's good going back to the plugin actually let's adjust tint a little bit it's a little bit too green so somewhere there okay going back to the plugin so if I go for a clean look but I still want to use film emulation it's not necessarily always to use grain so I can just remove grain so I'm going for a clean look so I'm gonna remove grain I'm gonna keep it clean um, then I still take advantage of the color because I'm gonna show you uh, comparison with Rex 9 and this one but let's finish it so we apply the film lot we turn off film grain let's play with a little bit with the tonal contrast somewhere there and let's see how the halation will play for us yeah Maybe I'm not going to use halation in this case, since we're going for a clean look. Quite honestly, it already looks pretty good to me. So this was before, this is after, and let's compare this side to side to Rex 709. So this is Rex 709, and this is the film emulation. You can see straight away that the skin looks way nicer than just Rex 709. So, Here's my take on how I color grade, how I do basic uh, color grade when I do uh, simple projects and I, I don't have much time to play with the colors and all that. So I want to again uh, point to this beautiful, great plugin called Dehancer Pro. It's an incredible tool that, help, that will help you to achieve the film look in easy few steps. But it still has some room for improvements, but those improvements are quite honestly easy to uh, to fix. And I already contacted uh, the developers, I pointed them to what you need to be focused on, what you need to fix, and I, I, they're already working on changing it. So I think uh, anytime soon they will fix all the issues that I had with the plugin. But overall, the plugin works great uh, and the tools like bloom inhalation um, film stocks and all that it's it just great and that it I really love this plugin and I hardly imagine my uh, color grading without this tool these days so I hope this information was useful for you um, thank you for your time um, I'll see you in the next one take care